I'm going to go ahead and kind of get started. What, what, we're, what we're really doing here today is a, a product line review. And so this, is, this would be what we would be doing if we were doing a hands-on uh, hands training and, and going through the product lines, installation methods. And of course, this would be the same thing that we'd be doing. We'd be hopping off and, and going doing the hands-on portion of it and, and, then, and then basically coming back in and, and continuing to go through it that way. So really that's, that's our, our goal here today is to talk about the products, um, we have a lot of, a lot of reps on here, which is awesome. Thank you for being on here. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me check the chat. You can, you can drop in and, and unmute yourself, ask a question as we're going along. I really want this to be interactive. This is really kind of a training for you guys too, when you're doing your, doing your trainings, when we can get back out in the field, if you're doing part of our hands-on trainings, or if you want to do these, um, online. So I'm going to switch over and share my screen. And so Eli and I are going to kind of uh, do a little bit of a kind of a co kind of a co uh, co moderator here. Everybody see my screen? You can yes, yeah. I got it. You got it. Okay. So um, <clears throat> quick introductions, I'm, I'm Troy Wicks, the Associate Director for North America. I'm here with Eli Cronin. He is the Technical Sales Rep for uh, the Cascadia region, which is... Pacific Northwest, Oregon, Washington, Montana, Idaho, Utah, and Alaska. Can you hear me okay? I think you need to talk louder. Talk louder, got yeah, it. There you, go. you, can, you can always talk louder, but you can't always not talk too loud. That's true. So. Um, a <laughs> little bit about Lita Creek. Um, we are, part of our business is a seamless flooring uh, manufacturer. We have a full line of polyaspartex, epoxies, urethane cements. Uh, we have some urethane top coats. Uh, really, we focus on superior performance products, um, engineered systems. We have a lot of low VOCs. We should probably add in there. We also have um, antimicrobials that protect the, some of our top coats from growing, growing mold in them or bacteria in them. Um, so really, a lot of you are used to hearing about Latacrete from a tile standpoint, but we actually carry a full line of products on the epoxies and the coating side. One of our real claims to fame is that rapid return to service. That's one of our, our real important things that we look at. Uh, we, we find timelines are, are really where money is won and lost on a lot of jobs. And so a rapid return to service, we focus a lot on polyaspartics. Uh, quick turnarounds of our vapor barriers, uh, ease of maintenance because a lot of our floors are, are more of a, a higher performance floor, so they're a little bit easier to clean. When it comes to sustainability and, and durability, uh, custom colors, you know, uh, lots of times we're dealing with interior stuff and somebody's going to say, you know, we've already picked colors or we already have interior colors or we're trying to match something. A lot of times we're just going to tell you, if you can get us a Pantone color that we can get to our, our manufacturing arm, we can match or really, really closely match existing colors. Uh, sometimes people will ask about um, tiles or sheet goods and stuff. And as we get towards the end of this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about that. We have some colors in, in, that are available that a lot of people don't, don't know we have, but we want to talk about those. UV stability and uh, like I said, already the antimicrobial technology. So really, we basically have four systems that we're going to talk about today. Uh, when we say the term guard, it's always just going to be a solid color system. Uh, the chip systems, the quartz systems, and the metallics. Uh, if you were on, I guess a week ago, Thursday, we, we, did, a, we did a presentation on the metallics and, and showed some of those installations. Uh, we'll be doing another if you want to see some hands-on stuff. We're basically going to be showing some, <clears throat> excuse me, over tile, uh, some different insulate. What, what else we're going to do next uh, Thursday? Can we show some coving. Yep, next do some week. coving. So we're going to really try and show a little more hands-on, uh, not so much the basic systems, but some of the systems that people ask about, some of the issues that they have, some crack repair, that type of stuff. So that'll be on the 28th. If you want to come to come to that, uh, you can certainly sign up for that. Get in touch with one of your reps, or send me an email, or one of your reps an email. We'll get you signed up for that. So those are the four systems that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the different products that we have to build these systems. A lot of these systems are going to be built either out of the same polyaspartics or epoxies. 
Uh, but we do do some hybrids where we'll finish off with the polyaspartic and, and do our inexpensive stuff with the, with the polyaspartics or with the, with the epoxy. So on, on the system, something I like to point out, um, the system is the, how you want it to look and then the products are, how do you want it to function and how soon do you need to get it to return to service and how much can you spend on the resin? True. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> So once again, um, when we look at, at the product line, uh, you're going to find we're going to talk about the polyspartics, uh, the urethanes, and the epoxies. And I think to, to Eli's point, you know, a lot of it we're talking about, you know, what's your time frame? What's your turnaround? If you're in a hurry, if you have very limited time, really the polyaspartics are, are your only avenue. Um, if, if cost and time is not a factor, uh, or if cost is a factor and time isn't, you may be just looking at epoxies. If durability and abrasion impact heat, uh, you're going to be really looking at like the urethanes, urethane cements. So a lot of those will be vetted out when you're talking about, you know, what's going to be the use of the space, how much time do you have, are there moisture issues, and we'll talk a little bit about moisture issues as, as we move farther also. So um, when you sign on to our, our calculator, our online calculator, I'm not going to get too deep into this because I think people can get lost in it. Um, we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time as we look at some different charts that we supply on what these different nomenclatures mean. But we can build a lot of different systems with the products that we have. And all those systems really have the same, same look as in a chip system is going to look the same, but like, like to Eli's point, the functionality of it, the use of it, that, that's really where you're going to be finding a lot more of these nomenclatures coming through. And we're going to talk about these particular products as we move forward. So I don't want to spend a lot of time with them here because uh, I want you to understand their functionality as we move forward. <clears throat> so um, you'll find that we've, we've online, we've got different ways of building the systems and we're actually coming out with a, a new calculator Coming, coming up, we're, we're working on it right now, a little more interactive, a little more uh, kind of steps to, to pick the process. But when you look at this, you're gonna find that these systems help, this helps you break down the system by how many codes, you know, what your surface profile is going to be, its features and benefits. So that will help you decipher exactly what system you wanna go with when you're actually looking online to, to build your product. Uh, the guard, you know, you're going to find that that, that, that solid color, um, this particular project, this picture is a five-year-old five picture of this actual airport uh, hangar. And what's nice about that, you know, when you look at a project like this, there's, there's a lot of work going into this. You've got the, the black squares underneath the tires. You have the black border around the outside. You've got the two separate colors of the white and the red. So you would think of that and you look at that as, as an epoxy, you know, this could take over a week to build this, but in a polyaspartic, you could do this in a couple of days, maybe even a day if you had the right temperature and humidity. Same thing here, we do, you'll find lots of, you can do lots of decorative things and it's always nice, whenever you can throw a border in somewhere, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but quite honestly, the nice thing about it is you're gonna be able to charge more and really, it doesn't take you that much longer to do it. Once you've done one side of it, you're basically going to tape off and do the other side of it and then do a single top coat over it. Uh, high performance, we talk about that. You're going to find the poly sparks don't, don't uh, pick up hot tire pickup, so you're not going to get a lot of black marks in the guard. So if you're putting them in hospitals or, or other avenues, you're going to find that you don't, you don't end up with cleaning issues so far. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's great for, this was an overnight job that was done. They needed traction, uh, so they did it in the solid color, did a traction additive into the surface of it. This was a, a Costco up in Alaska. It's a, it, it's a great product for giving you a solid color, like I said, but also a quick turnaround when you're talking about the polyaspartics. Uh, this, this product's kind of fun because everything you see here is polyaspartic, the lines, the arrows, everything about it. Uh, the, the Kimball Art Museum really wanted you to have the museum experience as you first pulled in. And they also were trying to get a high lead rating on this. So they wanted to get as much reflectivity with, a, with the least amount of light and energy that they were sending back to the floor. Nice thing about this product too, once again, you're not gonna have the hot tire pickup. You're not gonna end up with the black marks over the surface of it. Easy to clean. 
It has a solid, uh, solid color over or solid clear sealer over everything. So that maintenance really, when you're looking at something like this, maintenance is pretty easy. You're going to just do a single top coat of clear, and you're never really going to have to redo the lines or the arrows or the handicap unless you're going to change the way the format is. So it gives you it gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of easy care. You can be as decorative as you want to. This is what we just call a floating box system. It's basically three colors and a lot of blue tape. Um, it's it's it seems hard, but it's actually really easy to do. We we talk about those in our trainings. If you guys want to get signed up for one of our hands-on trainings, we'll certainly be talking about those there. Um, we can talk about like our chip systems. They're, they're just as durable as the guard system. Sometimes people feel like a chip system because they see it a lot in garages that its performance is different. But in all reality, you're building it out of the same liquids that you would build an epoxy or polyaspartic out of. So you're not changing its use. You can see the fire truck in the background. You could have a a industrial setting for a chip system. You're just getting the look of it. Once again, um, we'll, you can look online when you're building your system. This will help you decide which product you're gonna use, what the mechanical profile is gonna be. And we'll talk a little bit about mechanical profile going forward, what your thickness is, what that build looks like and features. Residential, um, you know, this is a, a repair shop that has, has a trench drain around it. So what's nice about the, a lot of our, our coating systems is you don't have an issue with the coating system being well above the grates. So you can pretty much blue tape off the grates and utilize the systems and pull your blue tape and not have any really weird edges or anything. Uh, dog kennels, uh, one of the, this is one of our uh, high points of, of the product. We do do a lot, of, a lot of dog kennels or places that, that you want an act antibacterial, uh, restrooms, food processing and stuff. So a system like this would be a chip installation system, which would, this is. And if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that, that that system actually goes up the wall to that, that chair rail. So it's easy to clean and wash out and not have to have, um, not have to keep the water off the walls or have metal or some type of separate, separate wall system you can basically do a, a little cove at the bottom and carry that, that all the way up. You'll see in, in, this, in, in this particular picture, the bottom, bottom one, this is what we call our economy cove. It's a one by four that's been nailed in place prior. Um, some guys will actually, they'll do coating, they'll, they'll do their chip system or their court system on the cove in their shop. And then when we get to the job, they just cut the pieces to fit, put them in and they'll, sometimes they'll use uh, like a contact adhesive or liquid nails. Um, some guys will actually use a brad nailer, a really small brad nailer. And then when you do your top coat over the whole floor, that's when that, that, that cove gets the top coat to make it seamless. I do know some guys that, that do a single over just so their, their chips don't get dirty in transportation or during installation. But also you see the locker room off to the left. It's a system where you can dial in the amount of traction that you want. Um, when I was in high school, you know, we wore spikes, so it didn't really matter. But now, you know, a lot of the football shoes or soccer shoes and stuff all have that plastic, plastic nub on the bottom, which makes them super slick on top of some hard substance or a coating like this. So being able to dial in your traction additive in the end will give you the ability to, A, do a sample for an architect with so many ounces in your top coat at so many mills and give them something that they actually know and you can replicate out in the field. And we'll talk more about traction additives as we go forward also. This is uh, IKEA installation of quartz on the outside. Uh, they have very limited time frame for this. But once again, uh, they're able to meet the time frame. But you know, everybody's seen those carts. You know, moving those carts around with those black tires, they would leave marks in their, the last America they had on those exteriors. Um, they were hard, it was really, really hard for them to clean. So they switched over to a polyspartic system easy to clean and it was a fast turnaround for this commercial setting. Um, we talked a lot about the uh, court systems being more durable. Um, basically, they're, the court systems have a little more impact resistance just because you've built up two layers of sand and an extra two layers of coatings. But one of the things I really like to point out, oops, let me go back here. But I really like to point out is that when you're doing exterior work, the polyspartics are, are, are UV stable the quartz is UV stable, but one of the nice things about it is you can leave your top quartz with a single top coat. And from that single top coat, 
you end up with the quartz being proud of the surface. You still can see a little bit of that quartz. So you get some extra traction out of that quartz. So it makes, it makes for a really good um, exterior, exterior uh, installation. I will point out though, um, doing steps like this, I've learned through trial and error, having either a, a color ribbon along the leading edge to give people a visual perspective, because in, in different light situations, it just the quartz can wash out. We've, we've seen that, so keep that in mind. Once again, quartz systems can, uh, we, we have a, a way for you to pick those systems online. You can pick your, your, your top coat. Once again, we talk about the profile, the number of coats, the thickness of build, how that system builds, and each of the features for those systems. This is kind of a close-up. This is the picture I was looking for. So you can see the traction to it. Um, it it's, it's easy to clean from the standpoint of the, the quartz is round, the top coat is, is round to it. And you can see the drain in the background. Basically, that drain was flushed to the concrete prior to the installation of the quartz. We haven't built it up so much that you have a lip or you have to raise the drain or do something odd to it. You can utilize the drains that you already have even with a quartz double broadcast system. So you're not building up so thick, plus the, the material doesn't want to run into the drain. So it's really, really user friendly from those standpoints, exterior or, or interior around drains and, and other areas. This is an installation system where the quartz obviously has gone, gone up much higher, six feet up on the wall. Um, it's easy to do these because basically you, you'll blue tape a line around the room and we always recommend that if you're going to do vertical walls that you're, that you're using the hopper gun, it is really, really difficult to get a nice look broadcasting without getting a baseball look on the side of the wall. So if you're going to get into doing walls, make sure that you're using a hopper gun. Um, if we were doing a hands-on right now, we'd be talking about that. Um, but since we're not, we're just we're going to show you a picture and discuss that. But once again, this room, uh, because, because it's a monolithic all the way up the side, you come in with a hose and wash that, wash that room down and not have any issues with the wall system behind it. <clears throat> Driveways, once again, you know, here we have a system where you can see the drain, uh, drain was prior in the concrete, looks great. You have a, a really nice seam around that drain, blue tape around it. You can do your quartz, then you can do an actual polyaspartic of your white or your parking lines or divisions in it or handicap directions, whatever you want to do, and then just do a single clear top coat over the surface of it. And once again, that's your maintenance. So you're not going to have to get back down into the floor or into the surface or into the subsurface and read your quartz and read your lines unless you actually allow it to wear through that surface and get into those, those edges. So clear top coat, that becomes your wear layer. I, I really like this picture because it shows from the manufacturing standpoint, um, if you want to have an antimicrobial or a really seamless floor, you've got basically these tanks and these tanks are sitting on concrete pylons that are sitting on a metal leg. You have polyaspartic from the bottom of that metal leg all the way down the concrete pylon, all the way down that step to the drain. So you have a seamless floor from that leg all the way to that trench drain across the bottom really, really super easy to clean. You don't have seams that are going to be building up material and nasty and, and bacteria. Um, when you look at the commercial kitchen off to the right, I like to point out the fact that you've got a trench drain. Um, you were able to just blue tape off the trench drain. Because you have fall, if you're comparing to an inexpensive epoxy system, you'd have to worry about the material rolling into that. So you would actually find yourself having to do a thicker build epoxy trowel down system which in, in the end becomes a lot more work, a lot more time. This particular system with the polyspartics, tape it off, put out your base layer, broadcast your material into it. It's not going to run. It's going to stay exactly where you've left it. So it gives you a lot of flexibility, even if you're going into new or remodel, especially in the remodels where everything's set, you're, you're not going to change any grades. It really gives you some functionality that you wouldn't have uh, if, if you were using epoxies that dry, you know, uh, that same same picture of one of those driveways, just to show you that you know the everything you see here when it comes to the lines of the colors are all the polyspartic, and then just having that clear top coat over it, it's really it's it's more costly than throwing down a, a logo or an emblem, 
But the reality of it is, is once it's down, it's down. You're not bringing people back in to restripe or place the, the logos over and over again, you know, even every two or three years. Uh, metallics, it, like I said, if you were on our call last Thursday, you saw a lot of metallics, a lot of crazy things that you can do with metallics. I mean, if you're on Instagram, Facebook, um, what, LinkedIn, if you're on anything, uh, metallics is a thing. They really show. And, I, and, I, and I, I, I will tell you, if, if you're an installer or if you're a distributor that has installers, um, I have my own company for 25 plus years. And when we did shows or places where people are going to walk by a booth or any, anywhere where we were in a place where we wanted people to come to our booth, we always showed metallics. We never had any chip or cords or anything. We just hung metallics all over the place. We had samples of the, the chips and the quartz out there, but the metallics are what drew people in. Now, did we sell a lot of metallics? No, not really, but we got top dollar for our chip and our quartz and our guards because people felt like if you could do these really cool floors, you're the kind of person I want to do my chip or my other type of installation. So metallics from the standpoint of selling are great. Metallics from the standpoint of installation, you really need to come across as an artist, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the, probably the most important thing. But reality being, um, you're still building this out of a polyspartic or epoxy. It's a very durable system. You just have to make sure that the customer understands what they're buying. Metallics are a slave to what I call the better homes and garden picture. And that means that picture of that floor is taken at the best time ever. Soon as they put down their roller, they take a picture and it's, wow, that's the most amazing thing ever. So if you have a customer that's brought you a picture and said, I want this floor right here, I want this right here, I usually say that's great, find out where it's at and buy the place because you can't have that. You can have that color, you can have that feel, you can kind of have that look, but every installation, no matter how many you do, are not gonna look exactly the same. They're gonna replicate, they're gonna look good, but they won't always look exactly the same. Well, and, and the most important part about a metallic installation is just really setting those expectations for your customers. Um, as soon as you start getting Pinterest pictures and stuff like that, it may be a good time to run because you may not uh, make the floor look like how they want it in their head. Right, right. So once again, uh, metallic floors, uh, I mean, people are using them everywhere. Just be prepared and understand them. There's a lot of ways of, of building these systems. Once again, we, we, we supply this online so you can go through and kind of pick, pick the system that you want. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more about that on some of the installation portion. You know, commercial, that works great in these commercial venues. Like I said, it's, it's something that you don't, you don't need to replicate the uh, look per se, but the color, the feel of it, that's, that's really what you're replicating in the metallic side of it. Um, you know, if you're going with the theme, it's great because you can pick colors that give you a theme. Um, if you get a chance, it'd be, it might be great to go back and watch the video that we, we did last, uh, last week. Maybe Jeff can post that on, uh, on the chat line here, a link to that. Uh, but once again, also all these pictures that you see online don't have any traction added and they're really glassy and smooth. We're always going to tell you to make sure that you make samples if you're going to do something commercial with attraction additive in it. So your customer actually gets a really good feel for what it looks like with attraction additive. We're going to see some pictures here that have attraction additive in it, and it gives you a matter of finish. And we really want your customer and you to be prepared for that look versus selling something you found online, buying all the products you saw listed, and then find out that, oh my, it doesn't exactly look that way. So we're talking a little bit about the application process, and I'm going to I'm going to kick it over to to Eli. As we oh, sorry, it shows up on mine faster than it does on Eli's. So um, on application, I think this step is probably by far the most important, and where most mistakes are made or where shortcuts are taken. Um, so this is something to really focus on: is your service preparation. Um, so you need a mechanical profile. Uh, our polyspartics, we ask for a CSP of two and any of our epoxies or moisture vapor barriers, we ask for a CSP of three to five. Um, and then our urethane cement, we want a CSP of four to five. Does this one have the chart that shows CSPs? No. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody wants that, I've got a great chart. Um, maybe Jeff can post it in the chat of the different service profiles. Um, 
You want to, as a general rule, you want to avoid using water. Polyaspartics are very um, sensitive to moisture in water. And your max moisture for polyaspartics would be about three pounds or 75% RH. Um, if you have that kind of moisture, then you can just use our moisture vapor barrier uh, to remedy that. And if there's any contamination, so if you've got oil or spill or whatever, you want to take care of that while you're doing your prep. Um, and then you fix all your cracks, all your voids, that stuff's gonna show up through your coating. Uh, different application methods. So we've got the dip and roll, rib and roll, brew and roll, and squeegee and roll. Um, the dip and roll is kind of self-explanatory, but you're gonna go ahead and mix your resin, put it in a pan, and you're gonna dip your roller in it and roll it. It's probably the slowest way to apply polyspartic, but it is useful in small areas, like if you're doing small bathrooms or you don't have a lot of room for tools or squeegees. Um, the ribbon and roller, you're going to mix your material and you're going to pour it out in ribbons across the floor and then use your roller to move it around where you want it and smooth it out. This method is also works well in small areas. Uh, it's just not very fast on a large area and it's hard to get a nice consistent top coat when you're doing it that way. Um, the broom and roll, we use a 36 inch uh, broom um, that's designed for applying resin and you use that to uh, spread your ribbons across the floor and then back roll it. This method puts a lot of material out very quickly so that you can start rolling it. Um, the sooner you roll your resin, the longer it has to lay out during its cure time, the nicer finish that you're going to get. Um, the squeegee and roll, very similar to the broom and roll, you're just using a squeegee versus a broom. Um, and obviously, if we were doing the hands-on, this is where we would go out and show you <laughs> what this looks like. Well, I think, too, one of the other things that we uh, it, it falls, falls between the cracks, we talk a lot about installation methods. Um, the dip and roll is the, the I don't want to say the only way, but until you really get used to doing things, it's really the only way that you should ever apply diamond top. And we'll talk about diamond top going further, but, but just realize that if you're doing a, a high abrasive floor and you're doing diamond top, you will be doing dip and roll and you will thank both Eli and I for telling you to dip and roll because you don't want to see the other side of that. And like I said, when we talk about traction ads, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and like I said, uh, we, we would actually be showing you these. So um, right. we're talking about it. The other thing, um, you know, when sometimes people will buy the, get the broom, this 36 inch broom, um, it's really handy, but sometimes it's not handy at 36 inches. Right. Um, you will find that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'll cut, I'll take a, the, the brooms and I'll take a pair of bolt cutters and you gotta use bolt cutters because it smashes and cuts at the same time. If you just hacksaw it, it's really cool to watch the black filament just fall out of it all over the floor, um, but it's not very productive. So bolt cutters, don't use a grinder, use your bolt cutters to, uh, to make that, that smaller. But I'll actually make like a six inch or an eight inch one and I like to use it behind toilets and stuff in the bathrooms because it is really, really hard to pour a blob and then roll it behind and around things where you can, you can actually pour a blob on one side, reach, reach behind the, the toilet or, or, or you know, stanchions on the floor and pull that through and then quickly back roll it. So you'll, you'll find that when I'm on, on projects, we'll have three foot ones if it's a 5,000 square foot job. But if we're just doing restrooms and stuff, it's way faster than trying to do trim roll stuff. Well, you, you can get really um, caught up trying to get behind toilets and cabinets and all those things. And uh, I've been on many trainings where I'm two rooms over and the guy's still trying to roll behind the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, as a side note, Jeff, I just made you host. So if you'll, if you'll watch chat, that'd, that'd be great. Um, so we're going to we're going to dive into our products on um, this kind of explain because we have some products that I don't think anybody has. Mm -hmm. um, not that I've seen yet. I've, I've seen people trying it, but I haven't I haven't seen their their products success, successfully. I've, I know they're trying it, but they haven't seen it successfully out there. So um, our product line basically it, we we have our our Flex XPL, which um, it's a more workable product. So if you've ever used our pure line, let's just say our pure line is more along the lines of honey. It's a very thick product, um, hardly has any odor at all. And so, I mean, you literally could be doing, uh, some, somebody used this on uh, a conversation yesterday that we were having. They said, well, I, I could use pure around a patient if I needed to in a hospital room. We don't recommend that. Um, we appreciate the thought, but we don't recommend that. Uh, so, but the problem with the pure line is, if you're inexperienced, it's, a, it's hard to work with. 
The XPL is a more flowable product, gives you a little more workability time, a little more, a little more functionality from that standpoint, it will lay out a little bit more. Uh, the SB, our solvent bore material, it's like water, you can make it really, really thin mill, dry super, super fast. The problem is, is that it stinks to high heaven. And if you don't own that airspace for 24, 48 hours, please do not use solvent born. I can't tell you how many phone calls I get of people who do a garage and just, they finish rolling it, they put the garage door down, they left a little bit of an air gap in it. And basically that solvent had nowhere to escape to. It's gotta go somewhere. And when Mrs. Smith or Mr. Smith come home, they walk in their front door and it's in their house. So please, if you're gonna use the solvent borns, they work great for, for open manufacturing. If you're doing track homes and you're able to get in there and do the garages when there's nobody living there, you do wanna make sure that all the drywall is either primed or painted. The solvent will go into that drywall. I've seen that also. So unless you own the airspace, please, please be cautious with the solvent barn. Um, all these products are going to give you primarily the same durability. Um, some of the builds are a little bit different just because of the characteristics of them. Uh, when we talk about a lot of the processes, you're going to find that we're never going to tell you to do a metallic with a pure. You can do metallic in solvent born. You can do metallic in XPL. You can do all of the other systems, but the one, the one thing you cannot do in pure is metallic, unless you really want a mechanical looking floor. So, um, so, so that's, that's one of the highlights of that one. To your point on the, um, the XPL versus the pure, for those of you who use it, one of my favorite things to put in the hands of somebody new to applying resin and rolling is the XPL. Um, and it's because of how it moves. It's so forgiving to, um, if you leave a roller line or you make a little mistake, it, it usually will lay out and fix that mistake on its own versus pure where you put it is where it's staying. And that's it. It's, it's not going to move. Exactly. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> we do carry a general primer and an oil tolerant primer. Um, if you're working on something that you, it's either had oil, you know it had oil, and you had to you know, remove that oil um, using, using Citrix or, or some other type of product, um, we're always going to say use our oil tolerant primer so that you know that you know. Uh, some people say, well, how much oil will it take? If you're asking me that question, don't ask me that question because it, that means that you're trying to limit how much oil you remove. We're telling you get rid of all the oil you physically possibly can by cleaning, by using oil, oil dissolving uh, soaps. Um, I'll, I'll use cat litter and Dawn. I mean, lots of things. So oil tolerance doesn't mean I don't do any cleaning. I just kind of sweep it off or grind it and go for it. We want to make sure that you're moving as much of the oil as you possibly can so that any oil that comes up underneath that the primer really is going to stall that out. And I think that process is uh, written out pretty well in the data sheet as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the general primer, we, we recommend you use the primer under, under all of our epoxies. Um, it's, it's not a must, but it, we consider it best practices. We really prefer that you did. And honestly, if you, for, for as inexpensive as it is, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you got to really decide if you want the, the liability of it not, not performing at, at its best. Um, so the urethane primer and waterborne epoxy, want to go? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, urethane primers, water-based primer, low VOC, low order. Um, this is really used as a primer for our wall systems. We have a urethane wall system. Um, and that's specifically what it's for. You can go over concrete, wall ward, or CMU. Um, and then our water-based primer is how we used to really build our metallic systems. It's a, it's a primer that you can make to floor black for your metallic system and be able to get on it fairly quick. Um, zero VOC, there's no odor, and uh, like I said, it's got a short repo window. I think Dan, I think Dan Welch is still on here. Dan, you'd asked, you'd made a comment, and I wanted to point this out. So we do have a system where we're, where we're using the urethane WB primer over, over self-levelers. And, and so that is, that is one of the things that we're, we're pushing out for trials right now. It's, it's performed well in our R&D. So that's where that's this, this urethane primer right here would be something that you'd use at, at, on one of your questions, on question four. So that, that would be what you'd use over the top of an SLU. And, and we can discuss that more if, uh, if you guys decide to go that route. Um, 
I love these two products. So our, our, our vapor barrier products, I mean, I'll, I'll let you talk about them. I love them enough that I'll, let's, let's go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'd say most of the floors that I'm involved in end up with one of these two products on it. Um, being where we are, where I am in the Pacific Northwest, moisture is just inevitable. If it doesn't test for moisture this week, it probably will next week. Uh, <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, historically, we had the moisture vapor barrier. Um, it covers you up to 100% RH. You can put it on five bale concrete. Um, and unique to that product, you can cover it with the tent you need for your chips and you can broadcast directly into it. You don't need a primer. So when you're going from a polyaspartic system to having to use moisture vapor barrier, you're not adding an extra step, which yep. is huge. So it costs a little bit per, more per square foot for the product, uh, but not having the labor of a whole other step and a whole other day of coming back to the job site is huge. Um, one of the tough parts about that was it was a 12 hour tier. Right. And so then enters the vapor band ER. Out of this last year, uh, I think the earliest I've scraped chips on the ER was three hours. Yep. So yep. It, it goes quick. It still has a great open time. You have about 20, 15, 20 minutes per batch to work with it. And then when it decides it's done, it's, it's gone. It's cooking. Yep. Um, but we were able to bridge the gap between where people weren't, didn't want to use a moisture barrier because of the 12 hour dry time and how temperamental epoxy can be with temperatures to, Hey, this one's going to be ready in three or four hours. Right. Um, that does slow down. I've had, it, Lower temperatures have had it cured about five. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because that... poxies are thermal cured, so they're very sensitive to temperature. Um, but at, at a normal 70 degree temperature, three hours, and you're scraping and top coating. So you can turn a uh, moisture vapor barrier floor back into a one day floor. And, and always remember, and, and this, this is going to be integrated in the calculator. It's currently not. So I just want to point this out. If, if you've been used to doing a XPL and broadcasting chip reports into it, realize that when you do with the vapor band ER or the, or the vapor band primer or the vapor band uh, barrier, your mill thickness is, is increased. And from that standpoint, it's going to drink more of your media. So figure an extra 20% or yeah. so, um, keep it, you know, keep yourself safe. I, I will say that um, I will maybe hold back a little bit longer in my broadcasting process than I would if I was doing a polyaspartic XPL uh, solvent born or, uh, or pure, just to kind of let it thicken up a little bit. I, maybe it's all a figment of my imagination, but I just feel like I'm trying to just let it, let it kind of settle in a little bit. Maybe it's going to take a little bit less chip, but do bear in mind that if you're going to use a vapor barrier, it is going to use more media, not pigment, but the chip or the quartz, the broadcast side of it. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, so these are some of our new epoxies we added uh, a bit about a year, year and a half now. Um, so any of you who worked with these, we did change the name slightly, but we have the surface built clear, the surface built pigment base, and the surface built flake. Let me point out something that you probably don't know. Everybody needs to know this. Um, we, when we originally brought this system on, uh, you know, we also had a, a quartz base and it just, we thought it made sense. And honestly, as we went forward, it, it did make sense and then it didn't make sense rapidly. So you're gonna find that the, the, the pigmented, uh, the, the flake, the surface build flake, and, and Ben, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but that's gonna go away this year and, and gonna be just basically replaced with the surface build pigment. So you don't have that, that the flake version of it. We're going to, we're truly really trying to bring the line a little bit closer together. So yeah. sorry, I didn't want to, I didn't no, want you to have to explain good. both if they weren't. Um, search boat clears, I mean, the name's kind of self-explanatory, but uh, it comes in a five gallon kit uh, between A and B. And it's a high solids clear uh, epoxy. It's designed for decorative broadcasts. Uh, I use it for metallics. Mm -hmm. One of the things um, you need to be aware of is it's for mid coat. It's not for your top coat. Um, just because it's clear, it's not meant to be a top coat. It doesn't have the abrasion resistance, resistance that you want out of a top coat. Uh, it is low VOC and lower. Okay. Uh, so then we also have the surface build pigment base, which is a uh, pigmented, uh, excuse me, a pigmented epoxy. And this one's semi self leveling. So if you're going to do one of those nice guard systems, like a nice gray floor, it's a great product for it. Uh, it's pretty fairly forgiving to your rolling. I did a couple of these with some newer people and 
Um, as you know, learning rolling on epoxy is a challenge and it went ahead and fixed most of most of the mistakes through the project. It turned out very nice. Good. Um, low VOC and low water as well, used for a mid coat, obviously not a top coat. Um, in most of these systems, you really do want a top coat with one of our urethane top coats or one of our polysporic top coats. Well, I think that's where, you know, so now that's what we're really talking about. We're talking about the, so the surface of build top coat UV, that's really what Eli's talking about that has a little more of that abrasion resistance, but also has a, U, a UV additive to it. So if you're working like in a, a school or a hospital or something where, where you are top coating with a, a, or need a top coat with an epoxy, this would really be the animal because if you've got windows and, and sun coming in on it, you really want to make sure that you're, you're using this. We would prefer that you put a polyaspartic down because this is, it, though it says it has UV capabilities, it's not UV stable. So I would just want to make sure that, that you don't think that you are getting uh, UV stability out of it um, uh, for being out in the direct sun. That's just, I just want to make sure that that's, that, that's being said. That's a, a good point to bring up too, because I've had people ask, well, it's not outside, so it doesn't need to be UV stable. Um, there are plenty of businesses with huge front windows and you're going to get lots of UV through those windows. Yeah. Uh, ben pointed out, so the beginning of next year, for those of you who are reps on here, beginning of next year is when, is when that's being phased out. So we'll, we'll basically sell it out and, and try and sell down the stock as we go into the fall of, the, of that uh, flake. So this, uh, these are a couple things that, we, that are new for us as of last year. Um, the, the membrane, the gel cove, or the cove gel and the epoxy fill. And we just happen to be across the, the table from Mr. Cove Gel. If you've seen any of our training videos, um, uh, I'll, I'll take the membrane and you can, you can do the cove and the, and the epoxy uh, fill coat. So uh, the epoxy membrane, when we brought that on, we, we, we wanted an elastic, you know, some, something with a little bit more flexibility to it for bridging cracks, uh, parking garages and stuff, because people were wanting a moisture vapor barrier, or a, not a moisture vapor barrier, but actually a, a water proofer from the top down instead of vapor up. Um, and we brought this on, we, we will use it in pretty much over anything, not over occupied space, just out of the pail. If you're going to go over the top of occupied space, which we do, uh, but those are call your rep, call tech service, explain what we're going over. Um, I know Travis is on here. Uh, Travis goes, hey, I got, a, I got a great spot that I want to use this over. And I said, oh, that's great. Where's it at? Oh, it's going to be this hospital, da, 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 da. And Travis, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But then I said, hey, hey what's underneath of it? I'm just kind of curious. It turns out to be like these $5 million, um, you know, the machine that you go through that, that does the C, C and D, whatever it is. Okay. Anyway, um, I said, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, so we, you know, we just want to make sure that we're knowing what our liability is going forward and, and what we're doing. We do have these in plenty of cases. We've got, there's 25,000 square feet of it in the wind in Las Vegas, though they're not using it currently because Las Vegas is closed. Um, but we do, we will put it over occupied spaces, but we just want to have that discussion before we actually do it. Over non-occupied spaces, go all day long on it. It's great for parking garages. Uh, you know, Kevin, Kevin has an opportunity with a lot of lanai's in Hawaii. You know, all the hotels have concrete on the outside of them, uh, waterproofing those. It's, it's perfect. You can broadcast a traction additive into it and then do a top coat over it. So it work, just works really good in, in uh, garages or anywhere where you're going to need traction additive and just an inexpensive system for that. Cove gel and cove epoxy gel. fill. I don't know how I became the cove gel guy. Um, Cove Gel is a great product we added uh, about a year and a half ago. It's something we really needed. This helps us be able to have a, um, a seamless floor and a nice radius. Um, one of the things about floors I think is important that even with trim or any kind of coving, bad coving or bad trim ruins your floor. Yeah. Um, and one of the worst things to look at is a cove that, that, that slumps really bad in the radius or something along that lines. This is a really easy product to apply. Now, usually with somebody new, I can get them going pretty well within about an hour of product. Uh, one of the things I wish I could do hands-on with you because there is some learning curve on mixing. That's actually where most of the learning comes from is mixing it correctly. Everybody mixes it too thin. And um, when it's too thin, it slumps. Yeah. Um, so 
Uh, but you can either mix it with silica sand if you're going to be covering it with a chip, or you can mix it with like quartz sand. If you're doing a quartz floor, you just pick the same color um, quartz sand as your floor, and then your floor and your coat will match. Um, and then, and if you do it right, you can actually mix it with the chip you're doing the floor with. That's a little bit of a level above application. You should probably learn the other two first, but it doesn't yeah. work well and helps save time. Uh, and then, so then we have the epoxy fill coat, which is just a very thick um, patching material that we can use on patching cracks and voids. Um, the other great thing about it is, you know, if you're doing a guard system and you have a bird bath or a low spot on your floor between coats and you notice it, if you prep it and apply it properly, you can actually use it to fill voids in between coats, let it dry, sand it, and then apply another coat on top to fix it before you do your final. Um, everybody knows it's, it's so much easier to fix those things before the end. Once you've clear coated it, that's pretty much what you got unless you're going to redo the floor. Um, you can also use the fill coat on walls. Uh, you, you can use it on CMU block to get rid of, you know, CMU block has all those little voids in it. So if you're coating the wall to make it cleanable, using that will fill all those little bug holes so that it's not somewhere where dirt can sit into. Um, you, and you can also fill the seams if you need to. Well, I think you pointed out a couple of really important things. So with that fill coat, I mean, we've all done the, we've all gone and done the, the first coat on a floor and then walked back in. And as soon as it's got a little gloss on it, all of a sudden you see every movement. And if you have some big ugly stuff, especially if you're gonna be doing a metallic or something, um, you know, those, those can be a pain. Um, so being an inner coat's nice. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about the coat gel. Um, say somebody mixes it correctly and they call you and, and they're like, it won't stay on the wall. I mean, I primed it, but it won't stay on the wall. What's the, what's the big issue that most guys run into when they go out, they prime the wall, they go and get stuff ready, get their mix all put together, and then they come back to what's been primed and it's, it's primed. It's dry, so we want a wet prime. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing on the code I want to mention is is no two sands are alike. Um, but I've noticed across the country what people consider medium gray silica sand is differs quite a bit. Um, so if you're having trouble with your code working, it, it also may be your sand. I've gone to, I'll say Idaho. I got some sand that was. Uh, short of just crushed rock <laughs> and and uh, it was so coarse that it just didn't want to hold together and pack together and the coat just kept falling and falling and falling we switched to sand and it was like a whole different product if you can find something that has multi-sized sand and that that's super super yeah. helpful so we're going to talk about the about the wall systems we've already talked about the primer for the wb but go ahead and talk about these two you, i think you've probably done the most of this of anybody in the company um, so we have two different wall systems that we offer. Uh, one is going to be a Novolac epoxy, which is a vertical HB. It is a very thick product. Um, Novolac epoxies are known for their chemical resistance. This would be great to do on a wall as a backflash for like a battery charging station. So we, normally we see Novolacs. Um, both of them come in a white. Um, the, the, we also have the vertical WB, which is what that primer we talked about earlier is for. Uh, and that's a urethane um, wall system that has a class A fire rating, um, mm -hmm. which is great. And it comes in either white satin or a gloss finish. If you need, we can, with enough notice, we can get it in a different color. Just know when you do any of these things in special colors that it does have extra lead time. We can't do it tomorrow. Right. Um, and yeah. So when we talk about our quartz blends, you know, we like like a lot of companies, we have the the products that are on the shelf all the time. These are the ones we always have. But we talked a little bit earlier about you know, Pantone colors or specific colors, specific blends. So you know, these are our our standard colors when it comes to the quartz. Now this is this is something that's interesting. So we've when we started going for interior market hospitals education. Uh, offices, commercial, library, all that type of stuff. Lots of times we could sell the system on the quick turnaround. We could sell it on the durability. We could sell it on a lot of things, but what we couldn't sell was the man cave colors. So when you look at this, <clears throat> when you look at this color chart, you see that we have 25 or 25 blends that we've basically gone in and knocked off the top 25 colors for education, healthcare, and, and basically offices or, or like commercial. 
So what happens is we're able to go in and sell not only the functionality of it and the durability of it, the quick turnaround of it and the, the longevity of it, but now we can turn around and actually match the sheet goods or the VC tile or whatever, whatever product was they were already going to specify that we're swapping out. Um, we have many, many times where we have a, a school up in Helena, Montana, that basically has their own blend of chip because that's what they wanted. And it's, it's their school colors. They gave us a Pantone, we came up with a blend, and that's what, that's what goes down in all of their installations. Um, when we talk about the traction added, that's, I, this is one of the things that I said we'd get to. So um, our traction additives are 40, 60, and 100 grit traction additives are added into your top coats, which is kind of a unique thing because a lot of traction additives are broadcast on, and I call it the sprinkler look. You know, you look across the floor that's had, had um, aluminum oxide or shark grip kind of thrown out onto the floor, you end up with that same look across the floor, where with our top coats, they're actually poured into that, that uh, finished coat mix, uh, the clear coat, mixed in, and then put on the floor and rolled out. So you end up with 100% uniform distribution of that product. The caveat to that is the diamond top. And that's one of the things I, I, I wanna talk about as a diamond top is, if you're into a, a area where you need high abrasion resistance, steel wheel traffic, construction equipment, forklifts coming on and off of like, a, like a, an asphalt where they're bringing in the BBs and the little bits of gravel and rock all the time, you're gonna wanna use diamond top. And that diamond top is, is an aluminum oxide, which is nine on the Mohs scale. It's, it's, it's no, yeah, emery top is nine, sorry. Yeah, I gotta remember that one. I told you wrong on that, I'll figure it out in a minute. <clears throat> but it's gonna give you the ability to deal with all the steel wheel traffic because it sits just above the coating. So that's gonna give you really, really uh, a good durability <clears throat> instead of wearing the coating down like you see in coffee shops and stuff where the coating starts to wear away. So that being said, that's where the dip and roll comes in. And that's really primarily where you're gonna find diamond top. Um, I do find some people use diamond top as a light traction additive over the top of their, um, their uh, metallics. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's something you definitely want to try on your own and, and, and get a feel for it. But that's one product you don't want to ribbon and roll with unless you're going to disperse it immediately. Uh, Dave Hasmeyer and I were talking about this just yesterday and um, blobs on the floor or lines in the floor. It is so fine that you actually want to make sure that you disperse it immediately or it'll fall right to the floor. It's hard to move it. Um, hey, I was right. It is nine on a most scale. Thank you, Eli, for being fast on the internet. Um, so it's one of those things where you definitely want to make sure that, that you uh, use the right techniques for laying it down and that you use the right, the, the right, use it in the right settings and use it for the right reason. Like I said, sometimes you could even use it as a matting agent. We're not going to talk about that today, but that's, that's the step up thought. Do you want to cover recoding after diamond top is been applied if you go outside of 24 hour window? Yeah. Go ahead. Using the, the brush? No, just, just understanding that your your reco process is slightly different once you've added a little oxide. Yeah, I mean you're you're, you're yeah, you're gonna you you know traditionally we tell you to come in with a sand with a sanding screen and 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 hit it. Um, they make a diamond a, a, a wire wheel that actually has carb carbides on the on the tip of them. And so you'll actually use that to open the floor up once you have a diamond top on it because the sanding screen is basically just gonna disappear. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing for, for now. And what I want to do is, Dan, I think you're, you're on here, right? There you go. So I'm going to run through some questions that Dan sent me uh, prior to our meeting today. Um, so Jeff, we'll, we'll get everybody, uh, we'll post um, a list of our, our, our uh, sales force and where they are in, in, the, in the United States so you can, you'd know who to get hold of in each of your areas. Um, when you talk about leadership training, I think sometimes we, we tend to um, not spend enough time with estimators and salespeople. So talking to your, your uh, reps and getting some more information on that, I think is really good. Helping, letting them help, help you come up to speed on some of the you know, times, uh, how many people are you going to need, what's it going to take, prep, that type of stuff is, is really good. Um, 
Jeff, do you want to talk about marketing help? Yeah, sure. You bet. So guys, one of the things that we offer as a part of our differentiation package is um, some marketing tools and some marketing training. Uh, you know, we subscribe to quite a few of the services like Dodge, where it gets us access to, you know, what's going on in certain geographical areas, right, uh, commercial-wise. Uh, we've got an entire team, as you may or may not know, dedicated to certain verticals. They're called the Strategic Accounts Group, and we have like a person devoted to healthcare, a person devoted to education, a person devoted to retail, et cetera. And, you know, through our training and through, you know, just simply being our customer, uh, we offer that partnership to you as a as a definitive point of differentiation. Uh, also, too, we we offer some uh, marketing tools like personalized residential and commercial brochures that we can do that we can add your data, your information, your logo to. Um, also, too, guys, um, we offer personalized training, and we'll come out to you. Um, we'll work a job with you. You know, it, we realize and we understand that a, a great way for you to learn is absolutely 100% on the job. So, you know, as things start to open back up again and we're getting more and more in the field, you can look for that in, in the future. And um, we, we're constantly thinking of ways that we can better help partner up with you in the field. So, you know, we're open to suggestions as well. Troy and I are always batting around ideas. Troy and I and Eli and, and the rest of the resonance guys are always batting around ideas. So we do want you to know that, you know, we are open and, you know, we're here for you. You don't have access to just Troy or just access to Eli. You have access to me you have access to our entire team. So, you know, if one guy can't help you or one guy's on vacation, you have access to backups and then backups to those backups. So because we know that you're not working nine to five, uh, quite a few of these jobs often go on the weekends. So we understand that we empathize with that. And, you know, we answer our phones and our text messages on the weekends too. So that just a, a quick summary of what, what we offer in addition to, um, you know, great products and, and awesome warranties and uh, and loyalty to our partners. I think too, one of the things that, you know, um, I was just on a call, I guess it was Monday morning. And, um, you know, one of the things is lead generation, you know, helping helping you guys find, find jobs. I mean, yes, we'd love to sell your product, but we want you to have somewhere for that product to go. Um, basically, I had a, a, a national customer say, well, if we pull the trigger on all 2,200 of these, can you do it? And so, you know, we need you guys too. We, we need you in order for us to finish what our strategic accounts team is doing or our RSMs are doing on national levels. And so we're really looking at um, this partnership from the standpoint of we are generating that work. And as we're generating those leads, we really need to funnel these back into somebody that we trust. And um, for those of you who are not on the, uh, the Elite Staller Network, please talk with your, your local rep or your RSM or your TSIS guy, whoever, and, and, and let's get you on board with that because that comes with, with some extra warranties and some help on, and, and some different areas that we really want to be able to work with you and offer you some things that differentiate you over maybe the guy that uses all kinds of products. And just happens to bid sparta coat products every now and then where if you're bidding sparta coat products all the time and you're working with us on a lot of things we want to make sure you've got that advantage of, of being part of that team um dan had also talked about like white poly uh white polyaspartics you know um sometimes people will ask us if we're you know color getting colors there's not an issue for pigments at all but also i find sometimes people are asking us about you know once we talk about the chips already we've talked about the quartz even metallics we know there's a, a, a wide variety of metallics and just because you don't find that in our offering doesn't mean we can't get you that the pearlescence or whatever you're looking for we're certainly able to do that we're always going to tell you two weeks because that's the that's the patent that oh brother we're out there um it's two weeks from everywhere we may get it in a week or a couple of days whatever it is it is available we just don't we don't stock it and list it on everything because you just can't every you just can't it, it doesn't make sense for us so when it comes to certain things like that, we can certainly do that. Um, one of the things I was thinking that, that we talk a little bit about and Dan has on here is like mechanical rooms and stuff. Um, for years, we've stayed at the Chateau, Grand, the Grand Chateau in Las Vegas for the world of concrete. It was not until one of our strategic account groups, people started a conversation with a maintenance guy, did we discover there's about 3000 feet of water and sewage processing pumps that they repaint every single year. 
And so there are tons of opportunities out there in mechanical rooms, you know, the animal shelters, a lot of places that, that we're maybe not looking for. But if you're on the tile side and you're already doing tile projects, I can't guarantee it, but I can, I can pretty well say that you're on jobs right now or bid jobs right now that have resinous coatings on them that you could bring in and just do while you're there, or add to it. Uh, we, we did a, a, a training last year with a company that had written $20 million in checks to other companies to do coatings on the tile projects that basically they did the whole umbrella and they subbed out the pieces they didn't want to do. And uh, between Don Garrity and myself, that company now is, is doing their own installations instead of subbing that out. So there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities with that. Um, we talked about going over SLUs. Um, Dan, are you, do, you, do you have a, a project that you're ready to, to go on? Do you have a project that you'd like to, like to do as a, as a training slash demo? I do. Perfect. Um, and I, I think that um, either Jason or uh, Bill Lang are gonna be a rep, but I will touch base with them and, um, and we'll, we'll get a hold of you guys and, and get this thing scheduled. Okay. And, and if you guys haven't seen some of our other trainings, this is exactly what we want. I, I'll go do a training at your shop, but quite honestly, I really want to go do training on a job, on a real project, so that we can talk about fixing all the little things, how to tape off the walls, how to set up the mixing station, how to walk on and off the floor. I can't tell you how many times guys have made the mistake of walking off of the floor in spikes and causing more cleanup issues away from the job they're even doing by making just, just silly mistakes. And so whenever, anytime we can get on a job and train you, it's fantastic because that's where we want to be. We, we want you to be successful. And the best way to be successful is doing every facet of it because we can do boards all day long that look great. And you can hang them on your wall and you can go, yeah. But until you're actually out there, it won't, won't matter. Won't matter. So, okay, Dan, we'll, we'll follow up on that today. We'll get that set up. Um, Dan, did you, there were, I kind of gone through, is there any other questions that I can answer or is there anything I haven't answered fully for you yet? So the white on white is what I was talking about with the polyaspartic. We did a Pfizer type project, you know, like a pharmaceutical and they were extremely anal about white polyaspartic and um, probably one of the most difficult you can do is white on white, you know. So I didn't know if yours was easier to deal with with some of the other polyaspartics that are out there. So I, I'll answer that with, with two answers. So a pre-blended polyaspartic white will give you better, better co color hide than when you're, you're blending out in the field. Um, and if you're blending out in the field, I'm always going to tell you a minimum of three coats at, at our maximum millage, you know, at, at that eight mils, a minimum of three to get a, a good hide on white. Um, but, but the pre-blended seems to give us a better hide initially than the ones that are blended out in the field. Okay. And I'll so say we, the same thing with red and yellow. Yep. We had an uh, animal shelter. We did a polyspartic and with a paint chip floor and it set so fast they ended up with air bubbles coming through and then they popped and of course then they have a black spot when the dogs are on them. So if you, does yours have a little more working time? so that you don't have those issues with the, you know, the air coming out of the paint chip. Um, that, you know, those are the, the scares I have with polyspartic sometimes. Sure, yeah. Um, I think that across the board, you'll find you have more working time with our products compared to pretty much anybody's when, when we're talking about the same volumes of solids. So I'm not gonna say that our, our XPL will, will work uh, give you more working time than a 40% polyaspartic. So, so like to like, you're going to find that our patented, the patented materials we have in ours is going to give you a better working time and a better open time during that whole process. So yeah, um, I haven't experienced that because our, we do have enough working time that it will lay down and, and encompass the chips very, very well. Okay. So as far as leadership training, um, Buck said something yesterday that he was, he was able to get a, a new team put together. And that's where I was asking about leadership because it really is leadership that allows this to happen. You have five, six guys working together seamlessly. It has to have a really good leader. So um, I'm not sure if that's how he was able to do that by 
you know, hiring a leader that already has experience or was he able to, from the ground up, build a team? He actually, he built that around his son um, who had zero experience. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight Buck's initial success with Don Garrity, his local rep, who basically was on every job with, with Buck for, you know, I don't know, half a dozen jobs of, and, and, and of different installations, different systems, different temperatures, because as things change, uh, humidity, you know, as, as a year goes on, you're going to need to have somebody out there on your first really hot job, your first really cold job. And so Don, Don and our team, our goal as a Spartacote sales team is not to have 50 customers. I've really told our salespeople, I don't want you to have more than uh, more customers than you can actually talk to during the day and go out and participate with those jobs. And I see Don's kind of piped in. So Don, do you want to share a little bit of how, how that team was built? Okay, Troy. Um, with, with Buck, uh, as we started, Buck was a strictly a tile installer and, and really didn't have any resinous experience hands-on at all. So what we did, we did the uh, hands-on training in, in his shop, got him into some smaller jobs. We went into garages and things like that. We used a couple of his tile installers, and we also used his son and a few of his son's friends uh, doing the hands-on training. Then we did some garages, you know, for the first six months or so. We had some hiccups and some issues and things, but got them worked out. And as this progressed, kind of fast forward a little bit, uh, Buck hired a, uh, a residence floor foreman from the Baltimore area, we'll say, and he was well experienced, 25 years in the uh, epoxy business and all that. He tried that avenue uh, that went for a little while, but didn't work out really well because the, uh, the epoxy foreman he, he brought on board didn't understand polyaspartics at all and basically fought the system the whole time and kind of confused Buck's other workers as to which was the proper way to proceed. So we went in, we did more trainings. And as this all developed, uh, his son, Joey, his, his older son, really took a liking to the product. Look, he took a liking to the process. He attended every single training I had. Every, anywhere I went, uh, Joey showed up. You know, uh, when we were on job sites, Joey was at my side. And we, you know, we just went through a process of that first year going and going and going I said to Buck you know I, I said you know Joey really has a good handle on this and you know he started running the crews well Buck got so big so quick he went from you know 800 square feet 1,000 square feet up to 8,000 square feet 10,000 square feet 20,000 yep. and as that got involved Buck hired a secondary superintendent type that was also well experienced in residence flooring that went down the same path. He only lasted maybe five, six months. And it was, it was a confusing time uh, just because that particular superintendent was in, interjecting uh, issues into the crew again, uh, you know, shortcutting and other things were going on. So uh, the final thing with Buck was his son, Joey, is the superintendent. He does run the whole operation. Of course, Buck oversees everything. But Joey <laughs> is the field operations superintendent and really covers multiple jobs. And, you know, 25, 30,000 square feet are common for Joey, along with doing 10 garages a week at the same time. Uh, so that's how it was. You just have to train your own people or find someone that you really, really have a lot of trust in, in your organization, bring them along and, and make that a dedicated person to run polyaspartic crews. It's just critical. And once Buck got it, he, he really, I mean, as I can say, he is one of the premier installers in the country, and he's just a, a you know, an animal with attention to detail. He's ex-military. He runs his team like a SEAL team. Uh, when they go on a job site, I've heard from many, many uh, owners and, and facilities that they've never seen a crew come in, be so prepared, so clean, so well-organized, so polite and do a job so pristine it's it's just a great feeling and it was all done internally so he did it himself um a lot of bumps you know to get started but we're here for you and all of our reps you know all of us guys are here for you so we'd love to help anyone that wants to get into this build a team like buck has you know it's just 
it's easy to do. It's just not letting too many people from the outside in that have all these strange ideas about how polyspartic should work. There's only one way they work, and that's the correct way. So hope that helps. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Don. Dan, so I want to piggyback on Don a little real quick. Um, something to highlight, that kind of service that Don gave Buck is the partnership partnership that you get from any of our reps across the country. And so we're here to be your partner in the endeavor of getting in the resonance coatings when things are good. And then your, your rep's going to be with you when things don't work out because sometimes in coatings, failures happen. And we're here through those times with you as well. Well, I've certainly had my share of challenges, but unless you're focused on a division, it's hard to grow it. So I need a team member to be focused. I have a person on the call with us, Paul, who has a company that does River Rock and um, has a few guys and they've worked with us over the winter because that's primarily exterior. And we're looking at how we can, you know, assemble the right team to have a division. And that's part of that question with a, regard to a division. If I can't rely on someone that can do it and has the support besides me, then it just pulls me away from everything else. Right. And I've only had enough experience to make enough mistakes that I know. So. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's really where you're going to find our, uh, this, this particular sales team is really dedicated to, it sounds wrong to say, but it's, it's the handholding, uh, socially distancing handholding. Uh, <laughs> But, but, you know, it's, that's the only way you're going to be successful, honestly. Um, we, we, we don't pretend to think that you can watch a video or have a conversation and go do this. Many, many times, and I think Paul will, will probably attest to this, sometimes you got to grab the handle and show the guy like this. And, and that's really where we find we shine because we're going to be out there and we're going to say, no, this is how you do the corner and move on. Um, so that's, that's, that's going to be your experience with this particular team. Okay. I appreciate the help. You bet. You bet. Um, any, any other questions from anybody? I'm kind of, I'm kind of monitoring the chat here. It looks like we're pretty cleared up.